Uh, if you want to start a, a script, you can click new script. This percentage signs, if you, uh, that is the comment. So this line, if I write something here, this line will be skipped uh, when you run the code. So this is the comment. And uh, in many other different program languages, they have something similar. We did this for optimal control course. In this example, we solved an uh, optimal control problem. In this problem, we minimize a performance index that is equal to the integration. Uh, there's no way to type integration, that's why I use the dollar sign as the uh, integration. So this integration is from zero to one. Uh, so this is, this is basically like you can use your own notation for this. The performance index is x square plus u square and dt. So this is the integration and the dynamics in this problem that is given here. Uh, it's because of the condition and it's also the dynamics. The dynamics says dx. So I use the dx to represent x dot. Um, dx is equal to negative x plus u. And I sometimes you know the boundary conditions, right? The boundary conditions you have x0 is equal to 1 and x1 is equal to 0. To completely finish everything we need to do, we need to know how to solve the differential equation. In my lab it has a command, it's called a dsolve, and this is used to solve differential equations. Now another function we will need is called a solve, and this can solve algebraic equations. So normally in the first step, before I start writing my code, I want to clean up everything on my command window and I clear all will clear all the uh, stuff in the workspace. So the workspace means stuff here. You, you can see that if I do clear all, yeah, and all these variables in the space will be gone. So after that, we're going to solve the differential equations. And these differential equations are from what we did over here. When we apply the Euler Lagrangian equation, and that'll give us a bunch of differential equations, right? So these are come from Euler Lagrangian equations. And remember, D solve is used to solve the differential equations. And look at this, the equation that we have. So this is a differential equation, and we can just type it out, and we'll save everything in these equations. I'm going to type my equations uh, here. And before you type the equations, you also need to declare symbols by using this. Symbols. And uh, here are symbols. We have uh, x, lambda, and u. So these are symbols. We want to tell the system what these symbols are. So I have uh, x is a function of a t, and lambda is a function of a t, and uh, u is a function of a t. Then I can write my uh, differential equations. The first differential equation, it's lambda dot is equal to 2x plus lambda, right? So I will write it as a differential, a differential lambda with respect to t is equal to 2 times x plus lambda. So this is our uh, first equation. And if you want to break a line, and you want to start from the second line, you can use three dots. So that uh, when you might have to see the three dots, it will see this as one, one line of code. This is not a differential equation, so this cannot be solved by using dsolve. And if you put everything together in the dsolve, it cannot be solved. And we need something we need to pay attention. Uh, we got a one algebraic equation, uh, 2u is equal to lambda. And that is not considered yet. So the second differential equation we have is x dot. This is the constraint. All you can say is that the dynamics equation x dot is equal to negative x plus u. So we'll do the same thing. x dot. So x dot is written like this. The differential of x with respect to t. So this is how we write x dot. That is equal to 
uh, negative x plus u, negative x plus u. So now we have the two differential equation. Uh, look, check the two equations. Two equations, we have three variables. That's why it cannot be solved if we do it directly like this. We need to replace this u. The first equation is about x and lambda. The second equation is about x and u. And we want to keep it only for x and lambda. So we're going to replace this u by half lambda. So we'll write a half lambda here. So now we have the equations we'll be able to solve with s, and that is equal to d solve these equations. If you click save, you can save it as a, a file. I just save it called example one. There is also save button here if you want to click save. If you just run the code, it will ask you to save as well. The run button is here. You can click the button or you can um, click F5 on your keyboard. We solved a differential equation. Let's see what we got. So I click F5. We solved S. And if you want to want it to print out S directly, you can simply re remove the semi column. The semi column basically is prevent it from printing numbers out. If I remove it and it will print things out on this uh, command window, it will tell me what's inside S. S is a structure here. And if I don't want it, want it to show there, or we'll just put a semi column, you don't want to show here. But if you want to visit S, you can still see it. S is over there, it's in your workspace. And you can, if you type S here, it will tell you what's inside S. And uh, you know that S has, has two variables, one is the uh, s dot x, the other one is s dot lambda. If I type s dot x, it will tell me what is uh, the expression of uh, x. So x is equal to c1 times the exponential function of uh, square root of 2 times t plus c2 times e to the power of uh, negative square root of 2 times t. And look at the result that we have. x is equal to c1 times e to the power of uh, square root of 2 plus c2 times e to the power of neg negative square two. So c1 and c2, they are interchangeable, right? Because these are two constants. So my c1 is uh, probably the c2 in the, uh, in the code. And you can also find your lambda is like this. You can type s dot lambda, and you will be able to see lambda. And you may want to say, like, what is my u? Remember, we do have a u. And u was not uh, solved by using these uh, differential equations. It's an algebraic equation. Uh, we used u already. We use u is equal to half lambda. So you can do, what you can do is, uh, you can put a u there. S dot u is equal to half lambda one over two times s dot lambda. So now you get s dot u as well. And if you run this code, you will be able to see three of them. You can see s dot x, s dot lambda, and s dot u. s dot u is equal simply like half of s dot lambda. So after we finish this, we, we want to apply the boundary conditions so that we can solve for the concrete numbers. We need to apply the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions are given here. So if we put the boundary condition into the solution that we have, we're going to solve a set of uh, algebraic equations. We're going to solve algebraic equations by applying boundary conditions. We're going to type all the boundary conditions here. The first boundary condition is uh, x at a time 0 is equal to 1. So what we can do is uh, we sub the value of uh, s dot x at the value of 0, and this will be equal to 1. Remember, we need to use the two, two equal signs. So this is how we write it. the first boundary condition. Sorry, I wrote it wrong. Sub s u b s. Sub allow you to replace a certain variable by a, a value we can sub t to 0 and that number is equal to 1. And if you want to make it more general so that in the future I just need to change this common variable, you can do that as well. You can create a new symbols t 
T0 and a TF. So T0 is the initial condition. In that case, you just need to write T0 here. And it will sub this value T by a value of T0. But you need to tell what is the T value, right? T0. So T0 is equal to uh, 0 in this case, and TF is equal to 1. So we are dealing with a time span from 0 to 1. And the second boundary condition will do the same thing. Subs s dot x at a time tf is equal to zero. So this is the second boundary condition. And given these two boundary conditions, we'll be able to solve this equation. And I will just use s. s is equal to solve these equations. Let's see what we get. We find a C1 and a C2, right? Let's see what is C1 and what is C2. And you use the same way to access the number. You type ss.c1, that will give you C1. And you do ss.c2, that will give you C2. So we find a C1 and a C2. Then we want to see the plot. We want to see how the state change over time and how the control change over time. So let's see how we do that. So we want to create some plots. Uh, we're going to plot all the re results. So for the time t in this problem, it's giving from 0 to 1 second. If mm -hmm. you just want to use c1, you can type something like this. c1 is equal to ss.c1, so that you will, you will know that is your c1. And c2 is equal to ss.c2. So now you have your two variables. I'm going to plot the result for t from 0 to 1. And uh, here, if you want to have a control of a dt, uh, you can do dt is equal to 0 0.1. So in this case, we're going to plot uh, 11 points along the trajectory of the function xt and ut. If you want to plot more, you can do uh, 101 points. So for now, we just do uh, 11 points. And we want to know what is the, the x value in terms of t. Just now we created two variables which represent the initial condition and a boundary condition. To make it a general, I only need to change one place. Uh, here I'm going to use the T0 and the TF as well. Uh, so that when you, when you are dealing with a new problem, what do you need to do? You just need to change these two numbers here and all the rest will update automatically. So this is the time t and we want to get x as a function of t. So we're going to get an x and this x will be a function of a t. Uh, we're going to sub the value of a t and a c1 and a c2 into this function of s dot x, right? s dot x is a symbolic uh, representation. Over there it has a function t and at the same time it has a, the, uh, the variables c1 and c2. If we do this, and let's see what we get in x. It's a long impression. I do not want to do that and I just want a, a simple number. I can convert this to a simple number by using a function double. So double convert that to the actual number. Let's see what we get. You can click run or hit F5 on your keyboard. So you will see what is our x. This is x. The initial value is a 1, right? And the final value should be 0. So it means the boundary condition. If you want u, we can do the same thing. We just copy the other command u that will be equal to double sub s dot u. And you can see your cosine lambda as well. Lambda will be equal to double sub s dot lambda. Then we can plot the result. If you want to create a figure to plot the result, you can type a figure. And you can plot time t versus x. This will give you the function of x with respect to t. The first variable here, that is a x-axis, and the second one is a y-axis. And you can also define a, a line type. If we use a solid line with the circles to plot these points, and this is how you do it. Normally, you should give it a title so to remind yourself what this plot is about. Uh, you can say this plot is uh, the states x. And you also want to know what is the, the x-axis and the y-axis. To give a name of x-axis, you use uh, the command x-level. Uh, and the x-level is time t, right? And the y-level
is a state and is a x, right? And the second figure we want to see what the control signal is. So let's put that. The control signal, the plot T U, and uh, the title should be this is the control and uh, U. And X level is still T, the Y level is U. So this will give us a plot of that. So let's run the code and see uh, what do we get. So you click run and it will plot two figures. The first figure is the states and this state is a function of T. So over time this state will change from one to the value of zero. So this is how the state changes over time. This state will guarantee that this performance index is minimized. And how did we get there? And we need to provide this control command such that the state will change in this way to ensure the performance index is minimized.